Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're at Data Privacy Day uh, 2018 here in downtown San Francisco, the LinkedIn headquarters, gracious enough to host this event. Bigger than last year. Last year we were here for the first time at Twitter, and really the momentum continues to grow because there's some big regulations coming down the pike that are really going to be into place and have significant financial penalties if you don't get your act together. So we're excited to have the new Russell Schrader, the executive director of the National Cybersecurity Alliance organization behind this mm -hmm. event. Russ, great to see you. Thank you very much for uh, for coming today. It was a great event. Absolutely. So you've been on the job, this job, you said like less than two weeks. So It's true. What do you think? I mean, then they throw you right into the big event. Well, I've known the organization. I've known the event, but the staff really have done an outstanding job. They made it so easy for me. Everything that they've done has just been terrific. They lined up fantastic speakers. They picked cutting edge topics. They put together a really well paced program and it was just a terrific day for all of us to, to get in, really have some good discussion. You're off to a great start. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you said you're familiar with the organization. You know, why are you here? Why did you take advantage of this opportunity? What, what do you kind of see as the mm -hmm. role of this organization and where do you see the opportunities to really make some significant impact going forward? Sure, uh, the, the National Cybersecurity Alliance is a who's who in the organization, people who really care about cybersecurity, who see it as part of their social obligation. And it was a wonderful group that I've worked with before when I was at Visa. And I see now coming in as executive director to really take it to the next level. We really are pushing, I think, on four separate areas that I think there's a lot of opportunity for it. Uh, doing more corporate work, serving more consumers, more consumer education, more consumer awareness. I think working with educating uh, staffers on the Hill and in regulatory agencies in DC on changes and technological changes and the cutting edge stuff. But and also, I think working with academia, sort of getting involved and getting some of the scholarly, the cutting edge, the new ideas, and just preparing for what's going to happen in the next few years. Right, that's interesting because you guys are national cybersecurity. Security is often used um, mm -hmm. as a reason to have less privacy, um, right? It's often the excuse that the government, Big Brother would use to say, mm -hmm. you know, we need to know what you're up to. We've got uh, red light cameras all over the place to make sure you're not running red light. So it's, it's an interesting relationship between privacy, security, mm -hmm. And then what we're hearing more and more, really a better linchpin to drive all this, which is identity. Right. Um, so I wonder if you can share your kind of perspective on kind of the security versus privacy kind of trade off and debate, or am I completely off base and they really need to run in parallel? Well, they do intersect a whole lot. Um, people have talked about them being two sides of the same coin. Another uh, speaker today said that security is a science, but privacy is an art. Uh, part of it is, you know, security is the, keeping the data in one place the same way in as when you put it out, sort of an integrity piece, you know, that it isn't uh, being misused, it's not being uh, manipulated in a way, and it's just not being changed. So that's a security piece. The privacy piece is people choosing what is used with that data, you know, is it to help me with an app? Is it to give me more information? Is it to give me uh, games to play and things like that? So and that leads into a lot of different advantages that in the web and on the internet. Now, identity, since you you put in a trifecta of, yes. of, of big terms. Everything's got to be in threes, right? And there's three reasons for that. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, identity part is part of who are you? Now, on the internet, you can be a lot of people, right? The old cartoon was, you know, on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. Well, on the internet, you can be a dog, you can be, you know, the person who you are at school, you can be the person who you are among your friends, you can be the person who you are at work. And those different cells, those different identities are the internet of me. And we just need to make sure that you are curating your identities and sharing the information that you feel comfortable with and that making sure that those are reaching the right people and not the wrong people. Right, so there's an interesting kind of conundrum. We, we cover a lot of big data shows and mm -hmm. um, 
you know, and there is kind of a fiduciary, moral, and now legal responsibility as you're collecting this data to drive some algorithm, some application mm -hmm. that you know what you're using it for and, it, and it's a, a good use of that and, and you have an implicit agreement with the people providing you the data. But one of the interesting things that comes up is then there's this thing where you've got that data and there's an application down the road that was not part of the original agreement, that, you, that no one even ever had an idea would ever happen. How does that fit in? Because as more and more of this data is getting stored and there's actually a lot of value that can be unlocked applying it in different ways, different applications, mm -hmm. but it's that wasn't the explicit reason that I gave it to you. Right, right. And that's really tricky because people have to be really vigilant. There is that education piece. There is the personal responsibility piece to do business with companies and with apps that you feel comfortable with. But you still have to trust but verify. And you do want to look into your phone, look into your PC, look into your other device and figure out where things have changed, where things are moving. That's one of the great things about being in the Bay Area today is innovation. But innovation, you just want to make sure that you are participating and you're in the part of innovation that's best for you. Okay, so you mentioned academe, which is great. We do a lot of stuff at Stanford. We do a lot of stuff at, mm -hmm. at MIT. Um, so as you look at kind of the academic opportunities, kind of where is some of the, the cutting edge research? Where are some of the academe mm -hmm. uh, focus mm -hmm. areas? that are helping advance the science of, of right. privacy. Well, right, well you named two of the, two of the most forward thinking ones right there. So well, I'll add to that, um, just because we're talking about Stanford, we have to talk about Berkeley. Yes. Right, and, uh, and Berkeley does have a, a whole group in uh, privacy and law. On the East Coast, in addition to MIT, you see George Washington is doing some things. George Mason is doing some things. And so you want to reach out to different areas. Cornell is doing things as well. So we want to be able to figure out out where are the best ideas coming from. There are conferences already there, and maybe we can convene some papers, convene some people, and f source out and give a little bit of more push and publish to people who otherwise would be getting the kind of publicity and encourage the kind of research in privacy and in cybersecurity. Because there is the business and the consumer educational component, not just you know the tech component to right, the academic right. work. So before I let you go, last question, where do you see is the biggest opportunity? Where's, where's the biggest either gap that needs to be filled, you know, kind of positive that's mm -hmm. filling a negative, right. or an untapped positive that we've just barely scraped the surface of? Well, I think that the, the, it's all about the consumer and to a large extent, to a large extent. You've got to figure out um, how do you make your life easier, right? Go back to the iPad introduction. Nobody knew that they needed an iPad until they realized they couldn't live without it. Uh, you look at what's happened with mobile, right? Now the idea of having a wallet is on your phone. So while I'm waiting in line at the grocery store, I'm checking my messages, I'm texting back and forth, and I just point my phone and I pay. Those kinds of areas are the kind of innovations that are consumer facing that I think are really terrific. There's a lot of business work as well being done, but you have to figure out where that's going to go. And I think the consumer just has a fantastic opportunity. All right, well, good opportunity. Look forward to catching up a year from now and seeing how much progress you made. I think we had such a great program this year. I can't wait till next time. All right. Thank you. He's Russ Schrader. He's the executive director. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We're at Data Privacy Day 2018 in San Francisco. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.